Okay, hi everybody. So what we're looking at today is uh, the idea of an action potential. So first of all, how do we know what an action potential is? What does it look like? Um, what we often do is we look at a graph because um, we know that action potentials are all about voltage or potential difference. So if we have a graph and we look at how the voltage across a membrane changes over time, then we see what an action potential looks like. So to start with, we'll be at our resting potential. Okay, which is minus 70 millivolts. And then, um, as a result of some sort of stimulus, what we get is depolarization. So depolarization means that that voltage is going to become more positive. And if the stimulus is strong enough, and we'll look at um, what that means and, and how that would happen in another, uh, another video, but if it's strong enough, then an action potential is generated. And an action potential does this. It shoots all the way up to around plus 30 millivolts. And then as soon as it gets there, it then moves straight back down again. And as you can see, it actually gets to below the resting potential. Okay, so it comes to about minus 80 millivolts. That's our undershoot phase. And then it moves back up and the resting potential is maintained again. So this this very rapid increase in the voltage or the potential difference is um, an action potential. Okay, so we need to understand how an action potential is generated in terms of what's happening with the movement of ions across the membrane of the neuron. So again, here we have um, our graph of voltage against time. Um, and the first thing that happens um, is that we've, uh, we need to uh, look at the membrane. Okay, so here we've got a sodium um, transport protein, but this is not the same protein that was in our membrane when we were looking at how the resting potential is maintained, because this is gated. So this sodium channel has a gate, and this gate will only open at a certain voltage and it will close at a certain voltage. At the moment, this gate is closed. We also have potassium channels in our membrane, which are gated. So again, they only respond to a certain voltage. Okay, and here's another voltage-gated sodium channel as well. Okay, so all of these um, are embedded in the membrane of the neuron. But as I said, remember, these are not the same as the channels that we saw in the previous video on resting potential. All of these different transport proteins, the, uh, the sodium potassium pump, the protein and uh, the potassium and sodium channels that are always open, and these gated channels, they are there throughout the whole membrane, scattered around. So we are just looking at these at the moment together like this to make it easier. Okay, so this is outside of the neuron. Here's the neuron cell membrane. This is inside the neuron. And to start with, we have a resting potential. So we've got minus 70 millivolts here on the graph, and we can see that we've got more positive on the outside and more negative on the inside, so minus 70 millivolts. So when we're at resting potential, all of these gated channels are closed. So the only thing that's maintaining our minus 70 millivolts is the process that we saw in the previous video. So if there's a stimulus, it causes some of these sodium channels, the gates open. And when that happens, because if you again remember from our previous video, we've got a higher concentration of sodium out here because of the sodium potassium pump. So sodium ions move down their concentration gradient into the neuron. What this does then is it makes the inside of the neuron a bit more positive than it was before. So on the graph we see that we get depolarization. The difference between the outside and the inside is still negative, so it's still more negative on the inside relatively, but it has become, uh, uh, the difference has become less, so we're moving up to become a more positive difference. In cells, there's something called a threshold value. And this is the voltage that's needed for an action potential to occur. 
In most neurons, it's minus 50 millivolts. At the moment, the amount of depolarization we've, ha we've had has not reached threshold. So at the moment, we've had depolarization, which means that the membrane has become uh, slightly more positive on the inside than it was. But the depolarization is not enough to trigger a big action potential. But if a few more sodium ions come in, then we might see that threshold is reached. If that happens, because we've now got a particular voltage and these are voltage-gated channels, more sodium channels open and more sodium comes in. And you actually, th th this sort of has a knock-on effect. So suddenly, more sodium channels open, more sodium ions come in, that makes the voltage even uh, in increase even more. And so that then means that even more sodium ion channels open. So it's a bit of a knock-on effect. Basically, we end up with this massive influx of sodium ions into the cell, and you see a sudden spike. This is our action potential. So we've now got loads of sodium ions inside this cell, and that means that we've now got a potential difference of around plus 30 millivolts. So now the outside is more negative, and the inside is more positive. As soon as we get to plus 30 millivolts though, that change in voltage then causes the sodium uh, gate to close again. And it means that the potassium gates open. So if you remember, we've now got um, from before, from our uh, sorry, from when we had our resting potential being maintained, we know that we've got more potassium ions inside compared to outside. So as soon as this gate opens, potassium ions are going to move out of the cell down their concentration gradient. We've also remember still got the sodium potassium pump, which is going to be pumping out more ions that way compared to the potassium it pumps inwards. So the effect of this is we end up with a decrease in the voltage across the cell. All of those sodiums that rushed in get pumped out and potassium is moving out as well. This decrease in voltage actually drops all the way. Oh, hang on, sorry. Yeah, I'm just showing here that there's a change in the relative um, charge on each side of the membrane. As I was saying, so the voltage decreases and it actually decreases below our resting value. Once it gets down here to about minus 80 millivolts, the potassium ion gates close. We're now back to a situation where all of our voltage-gated channels are closed, which is the same as we saw at the beginning when we were over here. So the only thing working now is our sodium-potassium pump and those potassium and the few sodium channels that are always open that we saw in our video about maintaining the resting potential. So those processes that maintain the resting potential keep going and gradually we move back to our resting potential. This will then continue at resting potential all the way until there's another stimulus to cause depolarization. So that is how an action potential is generated. It's all to do with these voltage gated channels and it's about when they open and when they close and the direction that the sodium and potassium ions move in. That's all. Thank you very much.